With PPSSPP and RetroArch, you can play classic PSP titles on your PC, Mac, Linux systems, or even on the go with your Android device. This guide shows you how to set up RetroArch to play PSP games. Here's what you'll need to have ready before you follow this guide. Install RetroArch, have at least one PSP game file ready to use. The PPSSPP core will boot .elf, ISO, CSO, PRX and PBP files. And finally, connect your controller to the system. If you're looking for a new controller, I recommend the 8-bit Doe Pro 2. It works really well with RetroArch and across a number of systems, so I'll leave the link in the description for you to check out. So first of all, we need to install the PPSSPP core in RetroArch. You'll need to boot RetroArch, select Load Core and then Download a Core. Next, navigate down the core downloader list until you reach Sony PlayStation Portable PPSSPP. Select this and the core will download and install to RetroArch. If you're using an existing installation of RetroArch, it is worth going back to the main menu and selecting Online Updata, then Update Core Info Files, and then Update Databases. This will ensure RetroArch has all of its important files up to date, reducing the chance of any issues. Next, we need to download the asset files that the core requires to work correctly. These include things such as system fonts that will ensure everything displays and runs as intended. These are not included in the core download as standard, so we have to install them separately. Simply go to the main RetroArch menu, select Online Updata, and then Core System Files Downloader, and then scroll down and select ppsspp.zip. This will then download and install the asset files to RetroArch. And now you're ready to play some PSP games. Next, go back to the main menu and select Load Content. Then navigate to where you've saved your PSP games and select the game you wish to play, and your game will boot automatically. Do note if you're booting a game from an archive file, such as a .zip file, there may be a brief pause whilst the emulator decompresses the game prior to loading it. This can often be mistaken as RetroArch crashing, so just please bear with it a little while and it should work fine. Now you have a game loaded, you'll be able to access the PPSSPP options menu, where a whole wealth of settings can be adjusted to your requirements. We're going to get your PSP games looking super sharp and crisp with some quick and easy adjustments. So from the main menu, select Core Options, and then Video, and then go to Internal Resolution, and select the resolution appropriate for your display. This requires a restart of the core to work though. This will then increase the internal resolution of the game. Note that the performance will depend on the strength of your system. Next, go to Anisotropic Filtering. This can be increased to up to 16 times. Increasing this helps with the improved distant textures that are all angled in their appearance and helps round them off nicely. Now we can go to Texture Scaling Level. This setting will increase the Texture Scale Level, which will help the appearance of the textures when the internal resolution has been increased. This is a setting that will have an effect on performance when increased to a high level, so experiment and just see what works best with your system. As mentioned earlier, the resolution change will require a restart, so let's just quickly restart RetroArch. Now you can experience all your favourite PSP games again, but all shiny and brand new looking. Just look how great Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins now looks. Thanks for watching this guide. For more RetroArch and emulation guides, explore the channel as well as taking a look at howtoretro.com. Thanks for watching, see you soon.